The Wingsung 699 is a cigar-shaped fountain pen with rounded top and bottom finials. The overall design is very reminiscent of the Pilot 823, which is perhaps one of the most iconic vacuum-filling fountain pens of all time. This specific pen is also a vacuum filler. The color is called Smoked, which is a injection molded plastic that's translucent and gray in color. The finials are both opaque black, as is the section. The cap features gold trim hardware. The clip is a bent metal clip that's extremely springy and functional. Towards the bottom of the cap, we have a metal band that reads Wing Sung 699, made in China. Now it's important to note that this metal band is not actually at the bottom of the, of the cap. Um, there is a certain amount of plastic material that protrudes below it. And unfortunately, that is a weak point of this design. If you're not careful with this cap, you're likely to get some cracking in this area. The cap comes off in one, two, and a half turns to reveal a two-tone stainless steel nib. This one is in medium. It also has the Wingsung logo, some nice scroll work, and the word Wing S. In the hand, the pen is extremely comfortable. There are threads behind the section, but they're very low profile and not noticeable. The vacuum filling mechanism adds some heft that makes the, the pen feel substantial. The cap does post deeply and securely, though it does make the pen a bit long. Let's take a closer look at this filling mechanism. At the bottom, we have a shutoff valve that prevents ink from flowing between the barrel and the section. This is good to help control uh, burping and also prevent ink from spilling out during air travel. To disengage that shutoff valve, rotate the piston up counterclockwise. Now, if you look closely at the barrel, we have two distinct sections. Towards the front, we have a flared out section, and in the back, we have an area that has a constant diameter. If you pull the piston all the way back, submerge the pen into ink and start pushing down, what you're doing is you're creating a low pressure chamber behind the piston. And as you push further down and you get to the flared out section, that releases the pressure and draws up ink. Then we can rotate the piston knob to re-engage that shutoff valve. And let's take a look at some size comparisons. In terms of size comparisons, here we have the Wingsung 699 next to a standard Pilot G2 rollerball pen and your typical Sharpie. Here we have the 699 in three different variants. This first one is a clear piston filler. The middle one that we just looked at is that smoked vacuum filler. And the last one here is a blue vacuum filler. This pen also comes in a brown resin, which I don't personally own and all of the colors are available in both the vacuum and the piston filling systems. Okay, let's disassemble the Wingsung 699. The cap unscrews. If you need to do some deep cleaning on the cap, you can disassemble it. The finial unscrews as well, and a metal band comes with it. And then the clip. You can use the clip to poke through the cap and get the cap liner out. And then you have the cap fully disassembled. The section unscrews. The nib and feed can be pulled right out. Now it is important to note that the nib does have this small notch at the bottom that unfortunately prevents it from being easily swappable with other nibs. 
To disassemble the barrel and the piston mechanism, you're gonna unscrew the blind cap. Grab a hold of the back of the threads and twist counterclockwise. And then the filling mechanism has been pulled out. Now, this is one area where I feel like the design could be improved. It would be nice if there were a couple of flats on these threads so you can grab a wrench and, and provide some torque. My poor blue version, while I was trying to disassemble it, I couldn't get a good grip on these back threads and I ended up stripping them. But at this point, you have the pen fully disassembled. To reassemble the Wing Sung 699, you're going to take your barrel and your filling system, slides right into place, twist the filling system down. Next, we're going to grab our section, and that screws right on. Our nib and feed. Slide right in place. And then lastly, our cap. We'll put the cap liner in. At the top of the cap, there is a notch. That's where the clip seats. And then we have our finial and our ring. And that just screws into place. And now it's ready to be inked. Before we ink it up, that's not the only disassembly we're gonna to do today. We also have this piston filler. I'm not gonna do a full disassembly of this piston filler because a lot of it is redundant with that vacuum filler. But one thing to note, the cap liner on this clear model is also gray. That's a small attention to detail. I wish they would have made that a more of a clear piece. To disassemble the piston, unscrew the section, twist the piston knob counterclockwise, and pretty soon it will come out. Here it came out with the key as well, which is okay. Then we have this gray collar you remove this gray collar with a wing sung wrench, which you can pick up on AliExpress and eBay. It is a reverse thread piece, so we're gonna twist it clockwise to unscrew. Pretty soon it should come right out. And then lastly, the piston. Grab something to use as a poker and push it through. To reassemble, we'll start with the barrel. We'll put the gray sleeve into it. Again, it is a reverse thread, so I'm gonna twist counterclockwise to seat it. Next, we'll put our piston in through the back. It does need to go into that gray piece. There we go. Our key goes in through the back. And then our infinial sits right on top. And you twist it in. Now you might notice there's a bit of a gap here. This piston mechanism does require a little bit of finesse to, to get it lined up just perfectly. So what I like to do is I give the finial a little twist and then I push the piston in so that it gets engaged by that key. That one was a little bit too far. The piston didn't quite go all the way up to the back. Let's try it one more time. Perfect. 
section comes back on an easy twist and then the cap okay inking up the wing sung 699 this is waterman intense black i'll uncap it one thing i like about this bottle is if it gets low on ink it does sit on one of the facets quite nicely so i'll put it like that Unscrew the piston knob, pull it all the way back, submerge the pen into ink. Let me see if I can do this so you can still see as I get, and then I push the piston knob down. As I get to the bottom, it'll release the, pist the pressure and suck up ink. That's a pretty nice fill actually. If you want to get a full fill on a vacuum filler, you pull the piston all the way down, keeping it upright, push, push the piston up, and keep an eye on that feed. Look until you start seeing ink coming out. Right there. Now, without moving the piston, we'll put it back into the ink and push it down. And now you have a truly full fill. I don't even see an air pocket in there. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off the extra ink. and it's ready to write. Okay, writing with the Wingsung 699. Take off the cap, unscrew the piston knob to release that shutoff valve. This one is in smoked. And it has a medium nib. I would say it is truly a medium nib. It's not that fine, but it's also not that thick. Our ink is our Waterman Intense Black. In terms of line variation, if you go carefully, you can get a little bit, but it's uh, not significant. And then for reverse writing, It's dry and a little bit scratchy, but if you're in a pinch, you can get a nice thin line. So what do I think of the Wingsung 699? It's a very ergonomic, handsome looking pen. Uh, it's good for air travel, has a massive ink capacity and that nice shut off valve. Um, the moral question of how similar it is with the Pilot 823 is a question that I'm not gonna answer today. But I will say that if you are interested in the 823, this would be a good pen to try out just to get a feeling for what it's like in the hand. And if you like a vacuum filling mechanism, um, it's pretty affordable at about one tenth of the price. So that just leaves me to say, Thank you for watching.